You are in the temple of the rants where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one's for Nisi Oisi and Shill, who says, Could you rant about claims that a series becomes good when it changes genre? Are these exceptions to your usual thoughts on people calling a series good after a certain number of episodes? For example, Madaka Box goes from a student council slice of life to a standard shonen to the greatest satiric deconstruction of shonen ever printed in Weekly Shonen Jump. One of these days I'll have to give Madaka Box more of a shot, but uh, I generally think that there's a certain... Like, I don't generally think shows tend to get good by changing genre because it doesn't change the construction of the show like it might change the story some elements of the writing like maybe if the genre shifts from something the author wasn't good at writing to something they are good at writing there's potential for it to get more interesting like it's not that i don't think shows ever change in quality along their run that can definitely happen however like, there is so much that goes into what makes a show good that is more than just the storytelling or just the, you know, the writing of each individual episode. It's like the flavor of the show, the, the distinct qualities of it. Like, for instance, with Madaka Box, I dropped that show after the first episode when it came out um, because I didn't like the character designs, I didn't like the artwork, I didn't like the style of the animation, um, the sort of writing sense didn't do anything for me i wasn't I interested in the characters like there was just so much that was not clicking with me that i can't imagine that just simply shifting the genre would change all of that I, you know unless all of those elements shifted and it's not that that's impossible like i think of a show like aoi bungaku series where it's um like six different adaptations of classical Japanese pieces of literature and like each section of the show has a different director a different character designer different art style like the only thing in common between them is that they are all made by Studio Madhouse and are all adaptations of classic literature and like there is an overall tonal sort of consistency between them and like what books they decided to adapt and just like the feel like you know madhouse has a certain feel of construction with their shows like i guess i would say what they choose to focus on in the production madhouse has always been a very like visually focused studio and it's it's not so much that it's madhouse doing it as that the kind of people they hire the the kind of stuff that they emphasize is people who are going to put a lot of emphasis on like striking visual presentation but not necessarily incredible animation like they're less concerned about fluidity of animation in the way that say bones might be and more about like you know impact of individual frames so like that's a consistent element but otherwise each of them is very different from each other they're all totally different stories in totally different genres with totally different art styles from different directors in a case like that i think it'd be fair to say like yeah the quality changes considerably between arcs and even in a show like, say, Mononoke, when, uh, even though it's all the same director, each arc is a different little story, and they each have their own sense of pacing, their own kind of tone, because they're all different takes on the horror genre. Um, I think that that show, it's not that, like, each one is massively different in quality. Like, if you like one, you'll probably like them all. You'll just like some more than others. But there's a huge difference between... I thought this was pretty good and then it became great and I didn't like this at all and now suddenly I love it. Like, I've never had that kind of transition. Um, though I have had it go the other way when just the writing falls apart in later episodes of certain shows. I've seen shows that start strong and end very poorly. I think it's a lot harder to go the other way, though. Like, it's a, it's a lot easier to have a show that has like a really strong premise um you know but like just the execution falls apart like they didn't know how to bring it home in the end and and make it a tight and consistent story i you know haven't seen any examples of a show that starts off just like super weak and on the wrong foot and then just becomes great because of some shift that they made uh midway through 
and like examples people have given me of shows that they think do that i have you know the ones that i've gone and tried i've always come away feeling like no that was not the case like say shin sakai yori where i thought the first four episodes were incredibly bad a lot of people who agreed with me said, no, the show gets better later. I watched the whole show. I never felt like it got better because the problems I had with those early episodes persisted. They were not just problems of the type of show it was or the pacing or the, you know, the, the storytelling. It was just like in the bones of the show was the things that I didn't like. So I don't know how true that is for Madaka Box, for example. I don't know if maybe I would be more inclined to enjoy it but like just the fact that for instance i don't like the artwork is a pretty big knock against a visual storytelling medium you know uh like if, if they're not to say that i've never looked past that and i very well could um but like i don't know again i'd have to try to reread it again but i can't really see making it through the first few chapters and it doing nothing for me and then just expecting it to you know, expecting to love it by the end and again uh, there could be a marginal increase. Like, for instance, Nan Nan Biori, uh, when I marathoned that whole show, the first season I gave, like, a four, and the second season I gave, like, a six. I was eventually endeared to the characters. I did eventually think that it sort of found more of its footing. It had a better tone. It, it, it you know, had more episodes that were of higher quality that were reaching into the characters a little bit deeper. But, again, it wasn't the difference between love and hate. It was the difference between, like, just below acceptable and just above acceptable for me so um you know I, i'm still curious to to try i'm still curious to be proven wrong by this like i think there you know it, it would make sense for there to be exceptions i don't think any rule is absolute i don't like you know i don't live my life by some kind of code that if i drop a show uh you know, it must be bad all the way through or something like that, um, you know. And I, I've always also said that no show is truly dropped forever. You can always change your mind and go back. But, um, you know, I'm not inclined to believe that there are shows that have just an, an insane uptick in quality by switching genre unless it literally becomes a different show. At which point, the question is, do you even need to watch the first part? Can you just skip to the part where it gets good and... You know, does it, is it that kind of experience? Because I might be inclined to just watch the part that's good. I still wouldn't say that that makes it a good work because you still have all the shitty parts in there and that would drag down the overall score. Though I could say like, hey, the good parts of this are worthwhile. I don't know. Tricky subject.